This is Zach here, and today I'm gonna to walk through an Ansible patching workflow using AAP. So you can see a, a small architecture diagram here uh, as to far as how the workflow is gonna be built out. So for this example, I'm using AWS EC2, but you could build this out on any hypervisor or hyperscaler um, that you're using. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and take a snapshot of our instance, um, and then we'll patch that instance and if it does fail, we'll go ahead and restore back from that snapshot. Um, there's a couple of additional steps here that I'm gonna talk about, but they're not implemented in this demo itself, um, which are you know, performing some sort of health check to make sure that the patches not only were applied successfully, but everything's up and running as expected, um, and then kind of a success report type of status as well. So the first thing I wanna do is go over into AAP and talk through some of the assumptions made here um, one being that you have a couple of AWS credentials. One is the credential type Amazon Web Service, so an access key and a secret key to pull information from Amazon and get your EC2 instance data. Um, and the other one is a machine credential, which is used within your key pair when you launch the EC2 instances so that we can SSH to those machines and apply patches. So with those credentials set up, we'll go over to an inventory um, you do need to have an inventory created. I have one called cloud inventory. Um, and if I go into those sources, I've created an inventory source type of Amazon EC2. And if I click on it, I've configured it to use my AWS credential that I have, um, as well as made some, some small changes to the source variables. One that's required being that region. So US East 2 is the region that my EC2 instances are in. And then also a filter for instances that are running. Um, you could also pull all instances and then just have a step to start them, but for this demo's sake, I just expect that they are running. So if I go back here, I'm now going to be able to show you um, the job templates that we've created. Um, if I hop over into my GitHub repo, I'll start with the snapshot EC2 volume, and you'll see here that the host is variableized, um, and I'm going to use a survey to pass that in just to make these playbooks a little bit more flexible. And most of the tasks in this playbook are gonna be delegated to localhost. Um, and that's important because we're using the Amazon Builder 3 library and we're just interacting with the API. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and get the volumes associated with this particular instance. Um, we will then create snapshots of each of those volumes in case there's more than one attached to the instance. And lastly, we will start up that EC2 instance if it's not already started, but we do expect it to be and then we'll wait for that EC2 to become reachable. So this is the only task in this playbook that's actually running against the host in the inventory, not local host. I mean, that's important because we wanna make sure we can establish that SSH connection. So once it's ready to go, the VM's been snapshotted, we can go ahead and apply our patches. So this will be the next job template in our workflow. Um, again, we use that same variableized hosts. Um, and then we have three tasks here, only one of which should be run. So this is built to work with RHEL, um, a few versions of RHEL, and then Windows as well. So if the RHEL version you're targeting uh, is using DNF as its package manager, it'll run this first task. Um, otherwise, if it's using YUM, it'll run the second task. And then if it is a Windows host, it will determine that by our Ansible OS family and use the ansible.windows.win updates module. Um, Key notes here is that gather facts needs to be true so we can get this Ansible package manager and Ansible OS family variable, as well as become true so that we can apply these updates with elevated privileges. The third job template in our workflow is gonna to be to restore from a snapshot. So again, variableized hosts. This will only actually run um, if the patching process fails, um, but I'll dive into that all more in detail. Um, again, we're gonna delegate these to local hosts because we're using the API. Uh, the first thing we want to do is stop that EC2 instance and then get the volume information for the volumes attached to the EC2. We are going to detach those volumes um, so that we can then go ahead and get the snapshots that we just took um, and we tag them specifically with the Ansible inventory host name to make it easy to find them. And then we're going to create new volumes from those snapshots um, and attach them to this instance with the on the specific device um, that the previous ones were attached as well. Now that we've gone through the playbooks, let's dive back over into Ansible Automation Platform and see what that looks like. So if I go to my job templates, um, you'll see I have one for snapshot, one for patch EC2, and one for restore. I'll go ahead and click on the snapshot EC2 instance. You can see here we've got 
our cloud inventory, um, our cloud management project, which is pointing at the repo I just showed you guys the playbooks in. Um, we'll just use the default execution environment for this one. We've got two credentials, um, important to have the AWS credential to interact with the API, and then the machine credential to establish that SSH connection. Um, and then again, the playbook specified is the one that I showed you earlier. So let's go and take a look at the patching playbook. It has a little bit different setup. Um, so two key things to note here is in this execution environment, I'm actually using a Windows execution environment. Um, it wouldn't necessarily be useful for this demo because we're looking at a rel host. But in the case that I was targeting Windows, I would need to have that ansible.windows collection available to me for it to work. And then for this playbook, we only need the SSH machine credential because we aren't interacting with the AWS API at all. We're gonna run the patching process directly on the target host. And then lastly, come back to the restore EC2, um, very similar to the snapshot EC2 playbook, um, main difference being that we're pointing at our restore playbook. So now if we go back to templates, um, the big one here, which is what this blog post is mostly covering is our cloud patch workflow job template. And if I come in here and I go to visualizer, it'll open it up for me and I already built it out, but I'll go ahead and step through each step. So the first one here is a project sync. So I click on edit here, the node type is project sync, and then I pick the project that I wanted. And the reason for doing that is to make sure I have the latest and greatest code. Um, if I push a change in my playbook, I want to make sure the workflow run leverages those changes. And then I have an inventory source sync node. Um, and this one is especially important um, to make sure I have the latest EC2 instance data from AWS, especially if we're starting and stopping VMs that have dynamic IPs. Um, if we don't run this source update, we may be targeting the wrong IP uh, for an instance, even though it does exist. All right, and then once we've done those syncs, we can actually start our patching process. The first one being, go ahead and snapshot that EC2 instance. Um, and then if it succeeds, so you'll notice that we've got our green line here for on success, we will patch that EC2 instance. And then we've got our red line here for on failure, we'll restore the EC2 instance from the snapshot itself. Um, of course, if it succeeds in the patch, we don't want to restore from the snapshot because we want to have the updated patches applied. Uh, what I've mentioned earlier where we may have a health check step here in the future, right? If we wanted to build it out a little bit further, um, where maybe we go from a patch EC2 to a health checks node. Um, if the patch fails, go ahead and restore. But then we also have another check to say, hey, if the web service isn't up and running, ooh, let's restore, right? If it is up and running, cool, let's send it. Let's make a success report um, and send it off. So for the purpose of today's demo, I'm not gonna make any changes here exit without saving um, and I can go ahead and click launch so one other thing I want to show let me back out of this is the survey so I did create two survey questions one for specifying the target hosts and I match it to that variable that I showed in the playbook itself um, this makes it a little bit flexible and easy for users to pass in the host they want to target um, for the demo I'm just going to point it at all which is my one EC2 instance and then I created a multiple choice single select to pick your AWS region and map it to that AWS region variable that is required. And I, since I'm only using the same region, right, I only have one entry, but you could have a list of these and allow your user to select. So let's go back to the template itself. Um, I'll go ahead and kick it off and let it run. Um, but in the meantime, what I'll do is I'll hop over, um, since I've already run this and I know it works, let me get you to a job template where I ran it successfully. So this is my workflow job. Um, and you can see it went ahead and sunk the project, um, did an inventory sync, snapshot of that EC2, and then patched the EC2 instance to succeed it. Um, since it succeeded, it didn't have to run the restore EC2. So I hop over into my AWS, this is the snapshot created by my initial run. Um, if I were to refresh here, I don't know if that step's done yet. So at the current moment, it's probably about to create another snapshot, uh, but it's not here yet. So let me hop back over to the blog post. Um, now that we've walked through kind of creating each of our job templates, our snapshot, patch, and restore, um, and then we walk through creating the actual workflow itself, Kind of what, what do we need to think about moving forward? Um, as I mentioned, is like, make this process a little bit more robust, right? It, it doesn't have to just be does the patch succeed or fail. 
we can add in some steps to check for specific status of services such as HTTPD for a Linux web server or IS for a Windows web server. Um, if it's a database server, maybe we're checking to make sure we can run a simple query against our database, um, things like that. Uh, additionally, you may want to add a reporting step. Um, the nice thing with these patching modules is they do report back what patches were applied um, and what changes were made. So we can leverage that information and build out a report that's easy to consume uh, for some interested stakeholder. And then lastly, integrate a notification mechanism, right? So AAP has a lot of notification built in already. So if you've set that up, then just go ahead and attach that to your workflow and make sure that, you know, based on the different outcomes of your workflow, the right people are notified. Um, if it's not integrated that way, you could also have a separate job template that does some sort of custom notification um, and maybe sends out an email with the patches applied, right? Things like that. And then the last thing I want to note is just to remember that this process is not limited to AWS. So, you know, the demo is using an EC2 instance, but this could work with guests in VMware, um, Azure VMs, Google Compute, um, even bare metal servers in your own environment. Um, as long as you have a process for snapshotting them um, and then applying those patches and restoring from snapshot if it fails, right? Um, so let's dive back over and let's see what the process is on our current run. Um, it looks like it's still in the process of snapshotting our EC2. So if I click over here, um, we won't have a snapshot created, but I can assure you uh, it has worked given that we have our snapshot here um, and We've got our second snapshot, so it did just complete. Um, and then the next step should be pretty quick to patch it um, since it's already been patched. But thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope that this video helps you uh, moving forward to, to build out a robust patching process in your environment. Um, as always, feel free to drop any questions in the comments and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you.